Oh, Jesus, this has been a hell of a day, guys. It's been a hell of a day. It's a dream come true to come up here and do this stage. I've seen so many legends come up and do this stage. And it's really touching to me that you guys all would come out and see this show tonight. But um, I really wish my parents were here to see this show tonight. Oh, they're, they're not dead. They just moved to Florida. They're not here anymore. <laughs> they're not dead. They, they're alive. They're alive. They just live in Florida. And they didn't, they didn't make it up to this show. Um, <laughs> right? It is. It is. They're, they're not here, though. So I wish they were. Anyway. Um, it's, uh, it's tough to a comedy, guys. You know, going out on the road and doing jokes, man. But it's good to come back here to home to St. Louis. After two and a half years ago, I moved away, and I came back here to do this show at the Funny Bone. So I wanted to remind myself what St. Louis was all about, so I wanted to go get the, the true St. Louis experience. So I went, I picked up an eight ball of meth, and, uh, and then I, I bought some liquor at the cat, cash checking place, you know, um, on my way to a St. Louis Cardinals game, you know, truly home, you know, St. Louis, baby. St. Louis. I get real high. All right, cool. We got that out of the way. All right. Uh, I know. I look like if bong water was a person. Okay, I get it. No, but uh, I get real high. I read this preview for a TV show called Ice Road Truckers. You guys ever seen Ice Road Truckers? Yeah. 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 I, I was confused, though, because I know that ice is a street slang term. You're ahead of me. For methamphetamine, right? So when I turn on Ice Road Truckers... I thought I was going to see Methro Truckers, and that shit would be hilarious, am I right? You know, like, somewhere behind the wheel of an 18-wheeler, grinding the shit out of the teeth, like, ah, we got 600 miles to go, ah, we got two hours to get there, let's do this shit, Methro Truckers. Hour-long episodes we've done in 26 minutes, you know? <laughs> At first, unofficially, and then deteriorates over time. You guys see Face the Math out here. This is Missouri, right? <laughs> I'm from here, I know. I, Jesus. Man, you know, get real high, man. Uh, so, let's talk about this. I remember the first time that my dad caught me smoking weed. Anybody remember? Who smokes weed here? Hey, wait, yeah. what? Oh, all right. This is Missouri. You know, I was like, oh, shit, man, maybe nobody's going to admit to it here because you don't want no shit going down. I see that what the cops do. Still read up on the news out here. It's weird. But I remember the first time my dad caught me smoking weed. I came in from high school, right? And he looked me in the eyes and goes, son, why are your eyes red? You know? I thought about it for a second. You know, I was like, oh, shit. It's going to be my time to be a man. I can stand up. I can admit to what I did, you know? Or I can try to hide behind it, you know? And, and be the little boy that I was. So I stood up and I, been, I was a man. And I was like, Dad, I admitted to it, right? I looked him dead in the eyes. I was like, Dad, I was getting high. I got high. I smoked weed after school. I'm high. You know what he said to me? He goes, no, you weren't. You were crying, weren't you, little faggot? I was like, Dad. <laughs> Dad, what the hell? Shit. I was in Portland, Oregon, and I don't know if you guys know about the rules up there, but they're a whole lot fucking different than they are here, you know? Up there, if you get pulled over with weed, like, they don't do anything to you. But, like, here, they're gonna, like, stick a finger up your ass or some shit, and, you know, like, spread your cheeks, lift your sack. It's not just black guys out here, it's white people, too. Like, there's no white privilege with weed out here, you know? I know, I got arrested for, like, 15 times out here, like... That's true. Is there a cop in the audience? Are you, uh... You police are you coming after me? Come back home for two days. Like all those old warrants were going. No, I'm just kidding. But I was up in Portland, Oregon. It was crazy though. Like I was up there, we were smoking weed, we were on a weed smoking tour, and uh, we got pulled over by the cops, right? You know, like me and Tommy Lucero were there and we had eaten some mushrooms and I some shit. Anyway, um, we had pulled over by the police, you know, all these lights are on us and shit. Two cops come up on both sides. They're like, Shh, there's, a back, there's a guy in the back seat. I was scared out of my fucking mind, right? I was shitting my pants because I'm from here in St. Louis and I knew what was in my backpack, you know? So, when cop comes up to the door and he's like, he's like, 
do you have anything on you? And I was like, no. Right? Not stupid, snitches get stitches. I know, I know bitch. I was like, no, but see, I was so high. What he actually said was, do you have an ID? You know, so I answered so quick. I was like, no. You know, I know I am. No, nope. No way to that. No way to that. And he was all confused, and I was really confused because he was confused, you know, so I was really high, you know. I, I was looking at him, he was looking at me, and he was all confused, and he was like, he repeated himself, you know. And to me, it sounded like, what do you mean you don't have an ID, you know? So I was like, I got all nervous, and I was like, oh shit, they're really stingy about the IDs. I, yeah, I got a bunch of weed on me, you know. I was like, I, there's, there's like two ounces, of, there's some wax in there, like I got some edibles. Like, I, I was poor. I, I had seen the videos from Ferguson, Missouri, right? I don't give a shit about any, I, I hey man, no. I wasn't getting tased in the ass with no, none of that shit happened. I ain't gonna piss and shit in my pants when I'm not on ecstasy, you know what I'm saying? So. Right there, you know, like, so, so he looked me dead in the eyes after I told him I had all this weed, right? And he goes, I don't care about your weed. I just want to see your fucking ID. You know, I was, thank God for being in Portland, Oregon, right? Holy shit. Portland, Oregon. Comedy stuff. Yeah, because, you, you know, you got to deal with ass backwards deals. And, uh, you know, you got to get up here and tell jokes, try to be funny to people, you know? They're all looking at you. Is my fly down right now? I'm sorry. I'm fucking, I, put it down. Put it down. <laughs> I'm Irish and Jewish, all right? I was circumcised twice. You definitely don't want to see what's going on down here. <laughs> Comedy's tough, though, man. I, was, I used to get all fucking nervous before I come up on stage. So I talked to some of my uh, comedian friends. Me. You know, they, they said to me, they go, hey, man, Tommy Chong was a comedian. Yeah. Tommy Chong smokes a lot of weed, you know? So, right, you know, surprise. Tommy Chong smokes a lot of weed. Maybe you should smoke a lot of weed before you do comedy. So I was like, maybe that's a good idea. You know, I was doing all the thing, dabbing and tree basing weed. I don't know, whatever the fuck. Um, tree basing. Yeah, it's drugs. You guys have seen people do dabs, the wax, the oil. Woo! All right. Woo. All right. There's some hardcore drug addicts out here. Alright, I like you guys. <laughs> they told me to smoke weed like Tommy Chong that smoked a lot of weed. I got too relaxed on stage. I was fucking forgetting what I was talking about. You know, and then I'd be on stage. And I just don't off and shit. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was fucked up. It was fucked up. So then I went back to the same comedian friends of mine. I was like, hey guys, I smoked a little too much weed. You know, I, I need something to kind of level me out, right? And I thought about it for a second. And they're like, well. There was this comic, Sam Kinison, right? <laughs> Sam Kinison, don't get ahead of me. Uh, <laughs> Sam Kinison did a lot of cocaine, right? He died early, surprisingly not from cocaine, right? But he did a lot of cocaine. He loved cocaine. It really sped him up. So I was like, maybe I should do some cocaine. I was like, <gasps> right? Let's try this shit. Yeah. I was fucking, yeah. Be like a god, right? You know, I was a sport of the gods, you know? Little, little geek for the beat, you know what I'm saying? Shit, yeah. Let's get fucked up. But that was, I was speeding through jokes. I didn't even know what I was saying. You know, I was jumping over things. I was forgetting to say things, you know? So I went back to those same comedian friends of mine. You know, I was like, guys, I tried doing all that weed, right? I was doing the weed. I was getting high on the pot. I was getting all bonged up on the chronic. You know what I'm saying? Then I was doing all that cocaine, little geek for the beat, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I need to, I need to not do that stuff. I need to be just that chill. I need to be relaxed on stage. And they're like, all right. They thought about it for a minute. And then they were like, well, there was this comic Mitch Hedberg, right? You guys know about Mitch Hedberg, right? I used to do drugs, but I, I still do. Yeah, all right, that guy. Yeah, well, he used to do heroin, and then he still did, and he kept doing heroin. He loved it so much that he died from it. You know, and my friends were like, you should try heroin. Right? And I'm easily fucking convinced, so I did. I tried it. I, you know, I was shooting up a couple. Of, these are all jokes. But, um, <laughs> shooting up. <laughs> See all these track marks? I got tracks. I got tracks over here. Yeah, no. Doing all this heroin, right? You know. And then, I, then what I realized finally is that I'm just a drug addict. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> 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 
I get so high. I get so high, I get more tore up than porn star pussy, man. I tell you what. <laughs> I got more stone than an Iraqi whore. That's an old one. All right. The weed out in California where I live right now is so good that one time this girl was like, hey, you can either get this pussy or smoke that bong. And it took me a second. <laughs> and I was still high, so the pussy wasn't that good. You know, if I could... <laughs> One time I got real stoned. I was doing these errands. Not this one time. All the time. I get stoned all the time. And I do my errands stoned. Because more fun, you gotta do a bullshit with a stone first. Am I right? Stoners? Hell yeah. Alright. Get stoned, go do your fucking errands. So I, I got stoned, I went to the bank, you know? I went up to the teller. And the teller said, hi. And then I got really fucking nervous. And I was like, oh my god, how did you know? <laughs> and then I walked out the side door. And I didn't, I didn't go back in. <laughs> Can you turn me up a little bit? I, I've been a horse all week. That's not a joke. All right, no? Can I get a little more volume in here? A little more? All right, whatever, fuck it. I don't care. You're already here, right? Um, ideas. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of ideas. These are ideas that I get when I'm high, and I'm a lazy stoner, and I call them high ideas. All right, it's cool. <laughs> my first idea came late at night. It was midnight. I was really hungry, and I love Vietnamese food. Where are my Vietnamese food lovers at? Yeah. Yeah. So it's great. Noodles, all that shit. Extra spicy, right? You know? I love Vietnamese food, but it was midnight. There's no Vietnamese places open at midnight. I was pissed. And I'm half Jewish. The half that knows how to deal with money. I just don't have any. That's the half I am, you know? So I got all these great business ideas, or so my mom says. Uh, so I came up with this idea for a Vietnamese rep. You guys know my mom. All right, cool. <laughs> Most of you guys... I smoke with my mom. I don't know. I'm calling her out. She don't live here anymore. Fuck it. She didn't come to the show. No, I'm just... What? No. Where was I? Idea. Yeah. Vietnamese food. I need to open up a Vietnamese restaurant that never closes. You know? I can call it 247. Right? That's lit. That's lit. That's lit. I could open up a, a fucking dispensary where they sell me right next door called the Faux 20 Dispensary. Am I right? <laughs> Hell yeah. Actually, I have a Vietnamese friend um, because that's what I need for this joke. And, <laughs> and he said to me, you know, he said to me, he goes, hey, I'm like, boy, it's, a, it's not pronounced a pho. It's pronounced a pho. Do you know that? No, I was high as fuck, so I didn't know that either. Um, high as fuck. Here's another idea. You guys think that when zebras take a shit, think about it. Get high and then think about it. When zebras take a shit, that it looks like a soft serve swirl twist ice cream. <laughs> what noise do zebras make? Anybody know? Zebra. That's, a, that's all I can think of. <laughs> Here's another idea. You guys think that the pine trees drove cars? <laughs> the pine trees drove cars that they have air freshener shaped like people? <laughs> Smell like BO? What do you think? <laughs> idea. I moved out to California. Everybody listens to the Grateful Dead out there. Like, in Santa Cruz, California, where I'm from. Where I'm set. I'll get back to that. Alright, cool, man. Yeah, Deadheads. Alright, ooh. Oh, Santa Cruz, that's where I live. Oh, you are? Did you fly all the way out of here for this show? <laughs> Holy shit. I know you guys. Yeah, you guys sell me weed out there, don't you? <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck that. <laughs> all right. Santa Cruz, man. Santa Cruz is the only place in the entire world that a white guy will win a Bob Marley lookalike contest. That's how much the hippies are out there. Am I right? But they all want me to listen to Grateful Dead out there. And I never listen to the Grateful Dead, right? Because I didn't really understand it. You know, I don't, I don't get it. So these people were all like, you got to listen to Grateful Dead. So I did it. I listened to one Grateful Dead song one time. And 18 hours later, I was like, <laughs> I didn't figure out a lot about the Grateful Dead. But I figured out what they call them the Grateful Dead. Do you guys know? You guys know what they call them the Grateful Dead? No? Because you'll be grateful when you're dead. So you don't got to listen to that shitty fucking music. 
It's horrible. I love smoking weed. Do we already say that? I don't know why. Uh, I love smoking weed listening to smoking weed songs. Those are fun, right? So what's your favorite smoking weed song? Anybody? Yeah, because they got high. Smoke two joints in the morning. The weed song by Bone Thug. The weed song by There's a good weed song. It's called The Weed Song. Right? Like that's, that's how high they were. They're like, fuck. What do we call this song? Well, what's the song about? Weed. All right. Well, let's call it The Weed Song. All right, that's it. Easy. Stoners. But there's no songs about edibles. Right? There's no songs about edibles at all. Hey, anybody eat edibles here? Who eats edibles? Edibles, right? Woo! Yeah. That shit is real, right? That shit is real. Edibles, they're real. So what I did is I was going to write the first edible song. So St. Louis, I got all these edibles, right? I got all these edibles, and I ate them at one time because I'm not a bitch, and I do my fucking research, okay? So I ate all these edibles at once, and then I was going to write this song, and then I got my pen and paper, and then I was like... Mm. I was sort of like a fucking dragon. You know? And I woke up 15 hours later. And I was like, uh, there's a reason there's no edible songs. That shit is real. Am I right? Holy shit. Holy shit. You guys having fun tonight? Seriously. This is a dream come true to come here and do this show here. But I have a very special treat for you guys here in the middle of my show. I'm going to come back. I got, I got more jokes. I got more jokes. But I have a very special treat for you guys right now. Um, so hold on for two seconds. Uh, I'll be back. I'll be back in one minute. All right? I have a spe special treat for you. Hello, St. Louis. Hey, we're back. My name is Miss Elizabeth, and tonight we have a very special treat for you. Does anyone here have problems? Does anyone here need advice? Come on, comedy show on a Monday. I know you need advice. Has anyone here been wrestling with decisions? Well, tonight we have a very special treat for you. This... This man, he's like the Dr. Phil of meatheads. His advice is sought after throughout the world. All right, so please get your questions ready. All right, if anyone has any life problems, get that ready. All right, and please welcome, put your hands together for the former world wrestling heavyweight champion, Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> Okay, so my ex-boyfriend wants me to pick him 
Yeah. Should you do it? Yeah. Should you go pick up your ex boyfriend? Yeah. <laughs> That reminds me of a match I had in 1987 down in Lexington to Kentucky, yeah! <laughs> Miss Elizabeth was sitting backstage and she wanted me to go backstage and get Miss Elizabeth, but I said, Look at here, lady! <laughs> I'm the macho man, I'm the champion, you're not. Next question! <laughs> Shut up, lady! Next question! <laughs> Who's got, who's got questions? Macho Man's got answers. Go ahead, ugly man in the front. <laughs> My wife wants me to toss her salad. Which dressing should I use? Which dressing should you use? Yeah. Which dressing should you use? Reminds me of a match I had in Atlanta, Georgia, 1992 against Buff Bagwell. Yeah. <laughs> Buff thought he was the stuff, yeah. Tossing salads for a living, oh yeah. <laughs> but I looked at him, I drew the line in the sand, yeah. I'm the macho man. I step in Slim Jim's, not you, punk. Next question. <laughs> Next question. Over here, who's got questions for the macho man? Go ahead, guy. Does the carpet match the drapes? Does the carpet match the drapes? Let me tell you what, you motherfucker. You don't want to see the madness come down from the top rope with the magic elbow drop and take your lady and show her who the real macho man is. You don't want that, punk. Ask your girlfriend she knows the answer. Next question. Quit laughing, lady. You're the champ's gonna show you why he's the fucking champ. Next question. Go ahead, lady. My sister wants to move into the apartment beneath mine. Will we kill each other? That sounds like a. I remember this time, a lingerie match at WrestleMania 27. <laughs> it was a Playboy money buddy match between some bimbos who don't have a job there anymore. <laughs> they just went back and watched each other's carpets. Next question. <laughs> Guy standing up. You're not standing up when the macho man's on stage. Ask a question or I'm kicking your ass. How do you please a woman? Ask your girlfriend what a macho man's all about. Next question. Alright, focus. Last question. The macho man's got me into it tonight. Who's got the last question? If you weren't a wrestler, what would you be? If I wasn't a wrestler, what would I be? <laughs> Reminds me of a match I had down in Seattle, Washington in 1993 against IRS. Yeah. <laughs> IRS looked at me and I said, listen here, Mr. Money Man, I don't like what you do. I know that you're a Jew and you're not getting in the back pocket of the macho man. No way, no how. <laughs> I'm not paying your taxes because I'm the macho madness and the village people wrote a fucking song about me and now you, oh yeah. <laughs> that is been it. For wrestling with decisions, yeah! I'm the Macho Man, Randy Savage, the toughest goddamn wrestler on the planet. If you don't disagree with that, you got a problem with me, baby. Hit my goddamn music. And when Macho Man was taking the stage, so let's all let me hear how much of a good time you guys are all having. All right, let's keep it going. Let's bring your headliner back up. Please keep it going for Mikey G.
<laughs> How y'all doing? All right. I had to take a smoke break. It was a shit. I put this bandana back under my hair. Fuck it. Speaking of my hair. Can we, can we turn this back up? My voice is killing me. All right. Doing comedy is tough. Do a comedy look like this is even tougher. Um, anybody want to guess why? Carrot top. Carrot top. All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, next, anybody? People always tell me I look like every other redheaded motherfucker ever. Right? Like I'm the love child of Danny Bonaduce and I love Lucy. You know? Or like Ronald McDonald. Fuck Raggedy Ann. <laughs> Or Kenny Powers, fuck Carrot Top. I heard that one too. I'm not the third Pete from Pete and Pete. That's fucked up. <laughs> Somebody told me I look like the little orphan tranny. What the fuck? I was down in Southern California, right? Somebody tapped me on the shoulder and he goes, Hey, buddy, Biodome sucked. <laughs> I looked up and it was Pauly Shore that said to me, I was like, Pauly, what the fuck? I mean, I looked like he used to look like. He looks like shit now. Anybody ever see him? Yes. Lately? No? Alright, cool. Fuck it. <laughs> I, was, I, was in, I was in Eugene, Oregon. Okay? And um, some guy that works at 7 Eleven who could have been on a number of drugs um, said to me, he goes, hey, you know who you remind me of? You know? And I was just thinking, I was like, there's a number of people, right? I have no idea how fucked up you are. I have no idea what I look like to you. So, go ahead, tell me. And he goes, you remind me of Chuck Norris. <laughs> right, right, so, I thought about it for a second, you know? And then I kicked his fucking head off, ah! Straight to the throat. I want that shit. You know, people call me Carrot Top all the time, um, even though I was a kid. And um, I told my mom that shit, you know. I was like, Mom, people always call me Carrot Top. It's fucked up. She reminded me, she goes, Michael Patrick, <laughs> anybody that calls you Carrot Top, remind them the top's carrots are green. <laughs> They're not red, they're not orange. Which was great to tell the kids on the playground, you know? It's great. They beat me up like a redheaded stepchild, okay? That's where that saying comes from. Shit. I told that story to a gay comedian friend of mine, right? You know what he said to me? He goes, mmm. I wouldn't make you a carrot top, mmm. Shook his hips like they said, mmm. I'd make you a carrot bottom, mmm. <laughs> Not my type of salad. Not my, that's not my type of salad. But, however, that is the fucking part of the carrot I look like, you know, the goddamn bottom part. So, I was in on that one, you know, I was like, hell yeah, let's do this. He wanted to fuck me in the ass, though. That's, I didn't know that. I didn't know what the carrot bottom wanted. But he, I didn't know what he wanted. It wasn't cool. I wasn't in for that shit. Um, this one time, this lady winked at me, and... Ladies never give attention to Lucky Charms Leprechaun. That shit doesn't happen. So I thought that was like my pot of gold at the end of the shitty ginger rainbow of life. You know, so <laughs> oh, wait, I sat next to this lady and she winked at me. She goes, oh my God, I love your hair. Mm, I love your hair. I'm a hairdresser. I'm in love with your hair. She started putting her fingers in my curls. Because ladies, the curlies are for the girlies. Yeah. <laughs> Jeezy might have didn't work that out either. It was fucked up. But uh, she was still kind of into it though. She was like, you remind me of somebody famous. So I was like, hey bartender, two shots right over here. I need them to be redheaded sluts because I really wanted to be one that night, you know? So <laughs> she takes a shot and then she goes, you, I remember who you remind me of. You remind me of Richard Simmons. <laughs> I, I, I was wearing a lot of spandex that night, though, you know, guys. I was, hello, hello, sweating the oldies and shit. Kind of, I'm sweating right now. Holy shit. It's hot up here. I feel like I, I did, that, did that whole workout or something like five minutes ago. What the fuck? Um, 
in St. Louis, uh, I know I, I come from a town where there's a racial divide. I understand that, you know. And it, it's, it's not okay, but I've lived with it for a long time. You know, out in California, everybody's a lot more liberal. Nobody even says gay out there. Like, it's a weird thing. But, you know, like, even out here, where people are fucking racist, you know, they'll look around before they say something really racist, you know? <laughs> it's okay to laugh. I got approval for this joke. It's okay. <laughs> but even the most racist motherfuckers look around, you know, before they say something fucked up. But nobody, nobody looks around before they start dropping, dropping ginger around. You know, that's, that's fucked up, man, to call a redhead a ginger. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's not really like the use of the word that gets me. It's like the hard R, you know, at the end. <laughs> you know? Dyke, Dyke, you guys see that ginger over there? You guys see that clear skin, polka dot, connect the dots motherfucker over there with no soul? That would be a stepchild ass motherfucker over there with that ginger motherfucker. You know, ginger, 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 look at ginger over there. Like, hey man, fuck you. If you're gonna call me a ginger, you better put an A on the back of that shit. You know, right? That's my ginger. Hello. Hey, what's up, ginger? Hey, what's up, ginger? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you gotta put an A on the back of shit. Hey, and don't get it fucked up. Only we can call each other that shit. Am I right, right? Am I right? Only we can call each other that shit. You gotta get approval from one of us before you stop dropping ginger or ginger. You get your fucking ass beat in Ireland. That's all I'm saying, okay? That's all I'm fucking saying. Right there. <laughs> that was a redhead. That's the only other redhead in here. I mean, like, one clap. They're like, shh. And they're like, I am outnumbered. I need a quick clap. Right now. <laughs> How many people have kids? <laughs> That's about the appropriate response right there. <sighs> I don't even know how I got out of the house tonight. I, I really owe the neighbor a fucking favor for this one, guys. Holy shit. Fucking kids, right? I don't have kids. I got a dog. Now because of my girlfriend. We just got a cat. It's great. Those animals give me the most love that I need, right? You know, like, fuck a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, who needs kids? Like, kids are, you know, like, dogs are going to steal your weed. You know what I'm saying? Like... They don't. They don't do that. Dogs aren't going to put you in fuck so far in debt, you know, or like make you question your manhood. You know what I'm saying? Like, and kids do that shit, you know? Fuck that, man. Like, I do a lot of traveling. We do a lot of traveling. We stay in really shitty hotels, you know? Like, the other night we stayed at a Super 8, which is great. Because usually we stay at like Super 4 and a half, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm like, Super 4, they're like, Super 8, we get all 8? That's crazy, that's awesome, let's do this shit. <laughs> super 8, yeah, it's, it's even super, see, it's just like, Uber 8, it's Uber 4 and a half. The, the S is like, out, the light's out, <laughs> at the Uber 4 and a half, like, that's, that's where we stay. But, I stayed at this really shitty hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I walked in, and there was like a junkie with a needle still hanging out of his fucking arm, out in the front. And, you know, I had already made a, a reservation on Booking.com. It was, they couldn't cancel that shit. So I walked in, and they were about to check me in, and they were like, you can't have your dog with you in the room. <laughs> and, I, right. <laughs> you know, I, I, I thought about it for a second. I looked outside. And then I looked back at him. And I looked outside again and tried to focus on the needle hanging out of the guy's arm. I looked back at him, and I go, what do you mean, sir? You're telling me. You're gonna let this guy stay here and not my fucking dog? <laughs> like, junkies go to your hotel, rip up your furniture, steal your microwave, and you're not gonna let my dog stay here? You're gonna let that guy stay here? Like, my dog doesn't show up to family functions two hours late and then start nodding off in the middle of dinner. You know, like, junkies do that shit and you're not gonna let my dog stay here? Like, my dog is never going to steal all the money out of my wallet and all the spoons out of my silverware drawer. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Chunkies do that shit. Dogs don't do that shit. It's crazy. Where was I going with that? Uh, it. Just kidding. Um, can I do some political jokes for you guys? Yeah. Maybe a couple. Oh, please. Please. 
Has it been that bad so far? Have I? Are you not a Macho Man fan, lady? I'm trying to. I'm putting. I'm putting my blood, sweat, and tears on the line. She's like, finally something I can relate with. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, you're still right. You're probably on acid right now, aren't you? <laughs> Is it that bad? Has it been that bad? <laughs> She's like, political jokes, finally. Are you on acid? No, I wish I was. <laughs> so give me some acid and talk shit about Donald Trump. All right, here, I got this for you, lady. <laughs> I, uh, I watched Hillary Clinton's most recent speech. You guys see this? You guys see her speeches? They're hilarious, right? This last one, she took a page right out of Bill Clinton's book. Did you see it? Did you see it? She was like, I did not have financial relations. <laughs> With those banking institutions, you know, it's funny. It's funny. Right out of those book. Uh, the U.S. Postal Service is coming out with a Donald Trump stamp. Did you hear about it? Yeah, no, no, they are. They really are, yeah, yeah. But they're having problems getting it out there because nobody knows what side to spit on. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll let you back that one. Republicans give you the most amount of entertainment though. Republicans are fucking hilarious because like three months ago they were talking about their dick sizes. Hilarious. Hilarious. Trump was like, my dick is huge. I, I have the hugest dick. It's the hugest. And I'm going to get Mexico to build it for me. It's... <laughs> talking about their dick sizes, but it was really funny because look, look back on the shit, this is dead serious, the day after the black guy was out of the race, they were like, all right guys, time to talk about our dicks, our dick sizes, and black guy's out of the race, he's like the biggest pinky finger, fuck yeah, all right, cool, I got you guys back on board, <laughs> that's around, <laughs> hilarious, all right, um, what is the last candidate? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I got one more joke. Last candidate, all right. Which candidate, now you can name this one if you figure it out, which candidate is old, <laughs> wrinkly, probably smells really funny, and definitely is not getting my vote in November? Which candidate? Hillary. Uh, who, who, uh, Hillary's pussy. All right, cool, let's move on. Oh, really? You guys vote for Hillary? Seriously? <laughs> Are you guys voting? Who are you guys voting for? Bernie! Right, alright, I'm not gonna give it. I don't vote, I don't give a shit. Like, that shit that, hey, hey, newsflash, guys, your votes don't fucking matter, alright? Cool, right? We all voted for Al Gore in 2000, they put fucking George W. Bush in that motherfucker. Your votes don't count, alright? I hate to fucking ruin this for you guys. But Donald Trump has been taking notes from Vince McMahon, all right? All this is one big pro wrestling promo. He's out there cutting this shit, telling her, I'm dead serious, you guys know about this shit? Pro wrestling and the politics have been together for a long time. 19, hey, look, hey, look, hey, look at this shit. 1991, who was, the, who was the wrestler they were trying to push? Shawn Michaels, he was a woman abuser. He talked a bunch of shit, everybody loved him, and then Bill Clinton became the president. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Seriously, think about it. Right before 2000, who was the big wrestler then? It was this badass Texas, take no shit from nobody, redneck motherfucker, just going out there saying, fuck you, I'm gonna do what I want. Oh, oh, boom, right? 2000, who gets voted as the president? George W. Bush. All right, oh, oh, right? Oh, you guys think this is getting too real, right? Who was the next president? Who was the next big wrestler after Stone Cold Steve Austin? Hey, eh? who was it? It was The Rock. And then who was our next president? Bo Rock. Hello. <laughs> they didn't even stretch that one. They're at Bo Rock, Bo Rock, half black guy. Oh my, it's the same fucking thing, guys. Hello. <laughs> but really, after 30 years, after 30 years of pushing whoever they want to be the next president, really, who runs this shit all along? Who runs fucking wrestling? Who runs politics? It's the guy at the top, right? Vincent Mann. So who's going to be the next president? Donald fucking Trump. Same fucking person. It's the same person. I can't answer. I don't write this shit. It's <laughs> <coughs> 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 kidding me. I don't, I don't want that to happen, you know? Fuck it. <laughs> We're all doomed. It's, it's all good. We're all screwed. We have to pay taxes and everybody's gonna die poor. It's okay. I hate to ruin it for you guys, but I love porn. Um, <laughs> 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 the 
this spring pack to light it up. I love porn. Um, I remember when I was a kid, you know, I'm 32 years old. When I was a kid, you used to have to like steal a page out of a Playboy magazine, you know, and then go hide it like 16 miles from your house and make a Goonie style map to go find that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta go down the river, get out of the third oak tree, take 27 pieces up to the north, find the sassafras, make a right. <laughs> then, then the other big pine tree, look 30 feet up in the bucket, it's up there on a branch, you know what I'm saying? Like, one picture, like, and it's the same picture you saw for 16 years, and you still go find the motherfucker because you're like, titties and pussy right there. So, you didn't know if it was pussy, you just thought it was something furry, but you knew everybody was talking about it, you know? I was born in the 80s, it was all fur back then, you know, it's crazy. You know, then, in the mid-90s, you could download porn. It was great, it was crazy. It was crazy, you could get Channing McCarthy's tits, you know? It took you like two hours, it was like... Areola, nipple, underboob, you know? And then finally you were like, vagina, oh yeah, vagina! It's crazy. Now there's a million categories of porn. A million, there's a million. Like, I go on this site called Pornhub, and guys, don't admit that you go to this site if you're here with your girlfriend or your significant other, all right? I know, it's okay, we all go to it. Pornhub.com, write it down. I'll repeat it one more in like two minutes, so. Pornhub, uh, but there's this category on there. It's like, right, when you get on there, it's like, videos, you know all about this. Videos being watched right now in the United States of America. You said it should, yes, yes. That's the weirdest category, because if you click on one of those videos, you are joining the weirdest multiplayer circle jerk patriotic Ooh, can you see? Bomb first thing or whatever, you know. You know, but I, I click on some weird fucking categories. Like I, but they're never what I think they're gonna be like. I click on Gonzo porn. Cause that's my favorite Muppet, you know, like totally not what that was though. Um <laughs> Not at all. Then I, I clicked on water sports because I want to see two people fucking on a water slide. Who doesn't, right? That shit would be awesome. But the water they were using was from Flint, Michigan because it was like all yellow and shit. I don't know, it was weird. Not the water I'm used to. You know? The most confusing category though was reality porn. Right? Because there's videos like casting cum couch or something, you know, like where a chick goes in and she's like, I want to be famous in Hollywood. And this guy's like, all right, here's what I want you to do. <laughs> Suck my dick. <laughs> I'm going to take a video of this and I'm going to send it to all my friends. I mean, all of the most famous producers in Hollywood. <laughs> and then they're going to book you for work, right? That, it's gross, it is. Um, there's other videos like Bang Bus, where a guy picks a chick, this is reality porn. A guy picks up a chick on the side of the road, fucks her in the van, comes in her face, and then throws her outside the van. That's about as real as it gets, right? That's, that's real life, right there. Who fucks like that? Who else fucks just like that all the time? I did it twice a day. No, no, that's not reality porn. That's not reality porn. Here's reality porn. If reality porn was real, here's what it would be. Uh, are you two on a date? Yeah, good, all right, cool. Um, for this joke, you are. So, you two on a date. Here's reality porn. Guy takes a girl out to dinner, right? Buys her a really fancy, fucking nice dinner, spends a lot of money, you know? Buys her drinks. Then he gets her on the dance floor, right? And he's like, dancing all weird, or what? Uh, however you dance, white guy, I don't know. Um, <laughs> You're trying to awkwardly rub your boner on her, you know, she's like, no, not tonight, not on the first date, what kind of girl do you think I am, no, no, two more shots of the she's like, okay, you know, and then you guys get back to your house, you're searching around for a condom for an hour, then you're driving to Walgreens to pick up a three pack because you're ambitious. <laughs> Then you get back to her place, you slide the fucking condom on two and a half minutes later, you're like, baby, I'm sorry. It felt so good when I was inside of it. I don't know. It doesn't usually. I jerked off before we went out. I don't know. I don't know what happened. 
that's reality porn. Right there. <laughs> That's real as it gets, you know what I'm talking about? But nobody's taking nine and a half hours to jack off. So that's why bang bust is a real thing. <laughs> Stupid. I got two more stories for you guys. You guys stick around for that, is that cool? Yeah. All right. And then seriously, whoever wants a five dollar refund from me or whatever you paid at the door, I will fucking take care of that because that's bullshit. That you know, it's just, it, it's it's something, you know, like, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm not mad about it. It is what it is. All right. But here's what I am mad about. I'm mad that women in America only make 70 cents to the dollar. So I'm running for president on the basic premise, women need to make equal pay in America. Woo! Yeah, mainly because I'm sick of buying women drinks. I am sick of buying women drinks. It's bullshit. <laughs> Ladies, you don't want men to buy you drinks because what the fuck happens when men buy you drinks? Here's what happens. You take advantage of those free drinks. <laughs> drink, 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 double shots of Patron, gold slogger, party shots, and then clothes start flying off, you know? And then you end up back at his house and you pass out. Because <laughs> you snore like fucking dragons. All right, when you get drunk, Women, you saw, and then all of a sudden, three o'clock in the morning comes, and then he tries to wake you up. <laughs> and then he looks down at you, and he's like, "Hey, time for you to pay for those drinks." You know, it's fucked up. It is. It is. But then you look up at him and you're like, well, that was a big tab at the bar, you know, like, those were a lot of shots of Patron, those gold schlager and body shots. Equality and pay. I'm for equality across the board. <laughs> really, seriously. So, you know, when y'all take advantage of free drinks, I gotta take advantage of free drinks, you know? So, I'm at the gay bars. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, winking at dudes and pinching asses, like, hey, I'm here for my free drinks. I wanna be your carrot bottom. <laughs> You know, and that, that what happens. You know, you guys know what happens, right? Take advantage of those free drinks, like drink, 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 drink. Double shots of Patron, gold slugger, body shots. Oh, clothes are flying off all over the place. Then I end up at his house passing out. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> You're ahead of me. All right. Then what happens? Three o'clock comes around. He's trying to wake me up. Like. And then he looks down at me, he's like, hey. Cause let's be real, I go after a bear. You know, like somebody, like, hey. Like, no twink is buying me. Like, hey, buying me drinks and shit, you know. I, I gotta go after a bear, you know, some big old guy that can handle me. You know what I'm talking about. Hey. <laughs> this is hypothetical. Alright, uh. These, these are jokes. Alright, um. Mm -hmm. Uh. And then I look up at him, you know, and I'm like, well. He did buy me all those drinks. That was a big, a big fucking tab. All those double shots of Patron and gold slider and those body shots. <laughs> That's how good it got. <laughs> so what I'm saying, ladies, is uh, make your own fucking money and. Buy your own drinks. <laughs> so I don't gotta be at the gay bar sucking dicks for double shots of Patron, you know? Like, sometimes bar tabs get expensive, and I know that. Oh and sometimes it's worth it, you know? But 
Sometimes it's not. <laughs> Depends if Vaseline is around. All right, let's move on. <laughs> I got this last story that I want to share with you guys, and I'm going to get out of here and go party with you guys at the train wreck. Um, yeah. Smoke all your weed. <laughs> I got some too. It's okay. Unless you're a cop. You're not a cop. No cops here, right? All right? These are all just jokes. By the way, they're all just jokes. Don't follow me after the show, though. All right, cool. Um, all my, do you guys know who Kate Hudson is? Yeah, of course. Yeah, what the you know who Kate Hudson is? If you don't know who Kate Hudson is, you can replace her with Taylor Swift for this joke. Um, because to me, they're all the same basic bitch that came from the basic bitch factory. Am I right? Like, am I right? Basic bitches, you know, like, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? There's some here tonight. I said, I'm not going to point you out. It's okay. Basic bitches. But they're definitely, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? The girls who wear the yoga pants, right? And the fucking Ugg boots and the head bandana, even though they're cold outside. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know, right? Right? You know? You know, the girls who drink Cosmos, buy all their clothes brand new and Forever 21, and listen to Drake. Basic bitches, right? I don't want to fuck a basic bitch. I want to fuck Lady Gaga. Oh, Any monsters in the house tonight? Where my monsters at? Hell yeah. Lady Gaga is the hottest bitch ever, 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 ever. She was the head vampire chick on American Horror Story this year. Am I right? Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh. She was on that motherfucker like slicing her titty open, you know? Having people suck on that shit like, yeah. You were born this way, yeah. <laughs> That's a Lady Gaga song, by the way, if you didn't know. Um, <laughs> she was great, you know. I don't want to fuck a basic bitch. I want to fuck Lady Gaga because basic bitches fuck like this. this is, you guys know how they all fuck, right? Like they. Yeah. Uh, they, they, all they do is missionary. They're like, uh, they look so all nervous, like, uh, 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 don't come in my hair now. Uh, uh, don't touch my brown starfish. Uh, stay away from my fucking balloon. No, don't touch my butt. Oh, no, no. I don't want to fuck a chick like that. I want to fuck Lady Gaga. There's all Lady Gaga fucks. She fucks like this. She gets all bent over. She's like, yeah. Spread open her ass. She's like, yeah. Stab me in my fucking intestines. Yeah. Ooh. I want to take a round of no disco stick. Yeah. Ooh. Give me some of that bad romance. Yeah. Ooh. Alejandro. 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 Those are all Lady Gaga songs, by the way. Uh, every time I see Lady Gaga, the fucking badness comes over me. You know, like oh my god, like oh, oh the electricity flows through my body. Lady Gaga gets me going crazy. Oh yeah, Lady Gaga. Oh yeah, I'm gonna step into you like a fucking slim jam, bitch. Oh yeah, you're gonna feel the madness tonight. Oh yeah, yeah, you're gonna feel the real pile driver. Oh yeah, Lady Gaga, you're gonna feel the madness from the top rope because that's how I do it. It's WrestleMania three all over again. Oh yeah. <laughs> Lady Gaga, you're gonna feel the wrath of the man and know why I'm not all about the YMCA. I'm the macho, macho man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Lady Gaga, but she gets me going. All right, that's it. I'm done. Uh, thank you guys.
Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying, man. That's it. It's cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, on the train wreck. There it turns out that there's a bar far enough out of uh, the uh, jurisdiction that I'm not supposed to have fun in. It's right down the way. So if you guys all want to meet over there, we're going to be doing shots, having fun. We hope you show up. You guys have fun? Yeah. Yeah, he seems like fun too because we had a lot of fun. Square up with these guys real quick. How was everything?